I need some. I need some. I'm not. That's fine, mate. My take that. If I do not clean up pocket, that's his life. Isn't it? Fenian Monday boys, how the hell are we? Brilliant. Very well, Derrickson. How are you, mate? Good, mate. Good, mate. I've got a wee player at Fox Weekends and that when we get on the table. All good. How's uh, how's Sweden? How's the old Sweden, Andy boy? Ah, it's good, mate. We were at the present the Abba Museum today, so that was good. Good week. <laughs> And uh, at the fit by yesterday, we'll get a wee update on Andy's Swedish holiday. Um, once we get in the table, Hoggy boy, how was the the weekend? Is the the Sunday fear disappeared, mate? I no, oh, listen, my, my my Sunday fear was kind of non-existent this week. Actually, to be fair as well, I, I was I was kind of surprised because I ended up seeing I seen the arse end of two bottles of tonic on Friday and end up Saturday night. <laughs> So when you get that deep in, in the wine as well, you're thinking Sunday's going to be a bit of a bugger. But no, it was it, it was good, mate. I had a good wee weekend. Um, good, mate. Good wee day at work as well. And glad to see your lovely faces again t- this evening. That's it, mate. How's that span? And by the way, very fucking eclectic mob tonight. Hoggy, Larry Chuck, Spain, Sweden, and Earl Paul coming back for his, his second stint in Cowed and Beef, man. We're yeah. fucking around, around the world, CSP the night. Scotty boy, how fits, mate? Brilliant, mate. Aye. Um, just been scrubbing the apartment this weekend. I've got uh, Team America coming tomorrow, as you know. So I look forward to that, mate. She gets here for nine days. So we've got loads planned. Going to go to Morocco, got to go to Seville. Aye, so just getting ready for our arrival, basically. Class, mate. I'm going to fucking Eyemouth next week, man, to get it up. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, how's tricks, my man? How's Sonny getting beef, mate? Aye, mate, just same old, same old, mate. Just uh, work, work, missing the football, uh, checking for transfers every day. Sharing That's the same it. as all you boys, keep an eye on things. Uh, happy with the manager. I don't know, I missed that discussion, but I'm I'm delighted with it. Aye, mate, well, listen, we'll get a bit touch on that. We'll get a bit touch on that with you. Aye, it's all right, there. Uh, you've not had your own for a few weeks Aye. anyway, so. Well, we'll get running, and we'll get a wee blather about that ten the transfers and that. But uh I first of all, Scotty had fired up some some posts. Obviously the memberships are up and running again and we're kinda of heading towards twenty already on the channel. So I thanks for everybody that rejoined after a wee bit of fucking about with banks and all that kind of stuff. Um I see he's all coming back on. It's much appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh Scotty just came up with this wee idea the other week about a wee cult eleven. Obviously, we're just trying to fill some fill some spaces and gaps. Um, we've no run out of end to talk about yet. We've we've fucking winged it quite well the last four weeks, Hoggy. Okay, but we've done um, all right, mate. We've done all right. We have, mate. We have. It's it is, it's hard gone, even if you're only on for a wee hour, hour and a half. But we've, we've managed well. But I Scotty came up with the idea the other week, the cult eleven. Um, I've kind of tried to stay away from the the big hitters as such, your Larsons and all that, and try to go a wee bit left field way. Maybe players that were only there for a year and kind of made a big impact or 
some some guys you would you wouldn't have probably seen folks best elevens, but I struggled with the goalie. I struggled maybe no adding big time Rogic in and, and things like that. I just tried to stay away from the, the well known ones. It was quite a tough eleven to pick, by the way. Aye, quite a but, tough one, I thought. There's no many in my cult eleven that made my, my best ever Celtic eleven. No, I none of mine did. I was the same with the that I, I wanted I wanted players in as well that, that you speak about and it's like, oh, mind, mind that cunt. You know, they could have players as well rather than, oh, he was fucking superb. But it's like, mind that cunt. He was a heat case. Like, like, that, that's what I've kind of tried to go. But we've got, listen, Dale, we've, we've got our, I know obviously we'll, we'll, we'll wait till we, till we get in and, and we can really get in about it. But Patrick McLaughlin's the first one of the, the viewers that's put his, um, his, his 11 in there. Do you want to put that up the new? Aye, fuck it. Five minutes with Paul about the, the right. transfer comings and goings for a wee five, then we'll get tore into our right. teams. Patrick McLaughlin, you're the first victim tonight, my man. First 11, here we are. Tony Warner, Chris Morris, Paul Elliott, Mark Reaper, Darius Dovchek, Paolo De Canio, Craig Burley, Barry Robson, George Samaras, Moose Dembele, and Gary Gary Hooper. Aye, aye, it's business. Are they all aye? Listen, it's his eleven, so he can put who the fuck he wants. Exactly. So um Dovchek, Elliot, the Canio, aye. Totally Dovchek, Dovchek aye. was in my in the converse, in my conversation. I, 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 we'll talk when, when I get through mine, but I can tell you that from his eleven there is one player of that eleven that's made my eleven. Same here. I've mm. got two. two. I've got two. But by the way, my love is murder. It's not to do with quality players or that. It was just either moments they had or memories. That's it. Of, there's not one player, maybe one. Mm, that's a struggle. Yeah, but we'll see. See, nah, the thing with this, see the thing with this, Paul, I, I had a wee look online, right? To do a wee bit of research. Yeah. To see if I could find any cult Celtic 11s, and I could only find one article on there. So there's not a lot out there. Mm. Um, that's a good thing about a cult 11, I think, is it's... It's no brilliant, it doesn't have to be brilliant players, it's like they said the boy said. Just somebody who's made an impact on you for oh, some reason, right. man. Mine's just very left field, very left field, most of them. I even, I even, even a goal, a wide scene one. Moment, one, I've, one, I've, I've just got one a couple of moments. Aye, yeah. one, one goal can make you a cult hero at class of Celtic. One is one fucking goal. Paul, as you're saying, it, it's it's everybody's got everybody's going to consider somebody a cult classic or a yeah. cult hero very very differently, and I think that's what will be good tonight because I think when you look at best 11s for Celtic, especially if you're coming for the same age group, mm. a lot of them are going to be the same players. But all the same because we've all seen the same stuff as well. But when yeah. you go, let's just go for fucking cult, cult 11s or the fucking maddest bastard 11 as well. Then <laughs> that's when it's it's very much a kind of personal thing to say, right? Yeah. I was there oh, that day when that couldn't done that, and I was there that right. day when he absolutely that, Martin. What? Aye, yeah, definitely. Listen, we'll have a wee, a wee touch on the, the, the transfer since Paul's on. We've not done for a couple of months, so... Um, but I, mean, I know we've got a few in the door, and it looks as if there's going to be a few, but I feel as if we're dragging our heels a wee bit, man. I don't know if that. I don't know if that's me just being a wee bit too impatient and all the 30 million chat and the Jota money and you're expecting these big marquee signings just to fucking walk in the door. I know this kind of stuff doesn't happen overnight. We've got the wingers in, we've got home in. Um, I'm just getting a wee bit impatient. I, I know Brendan and the team have started to come back for, for Japan and we've got until the 2nd of September. So there's plenty of time. I know there's plenty of time, but... Are you happy with the business so far, Paul? Outgoings, incomings, and what are you, what, what are you hoping for in regards to the the marquee signings? Where do you think we need to strengthen oh, massively? Oh, see, this, see this marquee signing, Kiro, and I hear people going on about 10, 15 million pound on one player. Massively unrealistic for me that I know the money's maybe there, but with that 10, 15 million pound tag, also comes the wages with that. So you're probably talking about 40, 50 upwards grand a week for a player on that sort of money. But we, I mean, I know we've raised it, we've raised a few contracts in the last few while to maybe no far away for that. But you can't be going. I mean, Celtic's in a good state financially, and I'm very against the board. I always am, even if they're doing a great job. I don't like your board. But the only reason we're in the financial position we're in is by no making these stupid signings. So am I happy? I'm, 
Aye, I like the look of the, the Norwegian lad, eh? I think he's going to be a player. Uh, obviously, the rest, but, but, but none of them are, they know too much about it, let's be honest. I'm, I'm, I do expect us to, to make one or two well-known signings, shall we say. I'm not saying marquee, but players that will walk into the first team. I do think we will. But what I'm most excited about, I think everybody's kind of, no missing the point, I thought that's very patronising. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Is what I'm really looking forward to is what Brendan Rodgers does with the players that are already there. Yeah. No, because in his first uh, stint, he took care of pre pretty much a Ronnie Delia team and improved some of the players, obviously, Roderick, Scott Brown, McGregor, dramatically, taking it to another level. So look at the players he's got to work with now. Your Kyogos, Hatatis, the rest of them. So that's the thing. And I'm, unless I do want to, uh, I, do, I do think we need to strengthen. I'd like to see a goalkeeper, if I'm being honest. Much as I like Big Joe Hart, I think we all know he's, he's got a mistake in him. Uh, come to the end of a great career, but I think we could be doing with strength in there. Uh, probably on our centre back, but whether or no we do, I don't know. I like the look of the midfielder lad again. Is the, the, the boy signed the Korean boy? Is it official? I don't think Celtic have announced it, but as far as the news reports are gone, yeah. it's more or less looked, a, a bit him. He looks, he's, I mean, he's already talking about. <laughs> Going to play at a higher level, going to play in Germany. I think I read a quote today that he's coming here to be the best, the best player in the league, which I liked. Then to move on to England, or I think it was Germany. Germany. Aye. Uh, but listen, we need to be realistic with that as well, boys. I mean, the loyalty thing for me, which was already on the wane dr drastically, pretty much completely died when Big Ange. I thought Big Ange was an opportunity to break the mould and show a bit of commitment. And I get his ambition and all that stuff. But I'll treat managers and to a lesser extent players as just what you should be, just passing through the club. We're the we're the one, we're the loyalty, we're the ones that are here all the time. Yeah, and yeah I think great point. Kind of, the, kind of the the final nail in my coffin for for expect. If, if you're looking for loyalty, we're, we're fully in the wrong sport. Let's be brutally honest. Aye, hundred percent. Aye, especially the way fat fan money's gone in Aye, I'm sure, and I'm the sure. I've covered, I've, I'm not. I know obviously he's have covered up because I've been watching, but aye, the Saudi thing, but. Obviously, you could go doing the human rights issues and many things that are wrong with that. Uh, there's a there's a wee devilish side to me. Pretty finds it pretty amusing that it could be starting to rival the the famed EPL, the massively overrated, overpaid EPL. Uh, so there's a bit of me finds it quite amusing, but at the same time, you can't really sort of deny that for a variety of reasons. I'm not going. It's probably one of the greatest places to go and play your football. Aye, unless aye. it's a pound you're after. <clears throat> I would be fucking Joel at off tomorrow, man. I'll tell no lies. I would I'd be out of here. Seven hundred grand a week, Jordan Henderson, man. I'm calling the boots back insane, on here, yeah. fucking Dodo. Is that, is that what he's getting? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I didn't know that. Hoggy <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, in the in regards to the transfers, obviously. The, the rumour mill hasn't been as big as I thought it was going to be. I, I know we've spoken about it a lot recently because we've had fuck all else to talk about. Um, obviously, the boy Ryder, I think, massively kind of punted Scott in that. Really, really want to see him coming in. Um, I think, and just touching on Paul's point, Hoggy, in regards to the money, Cal Mack will be on 40 plus now. I, I, I think if you look at Kyogo, Hatati, Carter Vickers and that signing, yeah. I, I, I think you'll find that <sighs> Probably half the starting eleven or, 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 or more will be on thirty grand plus now mm -hmm. at, at Park Kid. Is that have you got any kind of worrying what Paul's touching on? And I've seen a couple of comments and go go and doing that fucking route that we've not really been done before and, and spending that big, big money and big big wages and no, the worst, case, to worst to case scenario, but that fucking happened to that. That shit yeah, happened to did. Clyde. If I could just jump in for a minute, Dale, there, sorry, Hoggy. I remember Martin O'Neill. Martin O'Neill spent big money, big wages, mm -hmm. and, and we were in a fairly precarious position at the back of Martin O'Neill's time. I remember the, 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 the start, and I'm not into all this, starts and, and bank balances and whatnot, but I remember it wasn't great. It wasn't great and took a bit of recovery for that. Uh, so that needs to be mind you need to be mindful of that as well. When you go, Hoggy, sorry, pal. Uh, no, I, I think just, just on, on the point that you, you're making there, I think that. In two points you're making there as well, you know, obviously the the, the more you spend, the more you're going to raise your playing budget um, or yeah. your salary budget at least anyway, then the more you're going to have to bring in. 
Now, what that might then do is go hand in hand with maybe a, a no, a new kind of a, a new focus on the, the transfer strategy. But I think an embracing of exactly what you say again, Paul, is the fact that we and we they, I don't like to kind of batter him that fucking same thing. But we're saying we're not the destination club. You're part of somebody's journey yep. now, um, yes, no. and, and having that almost acceptance to say you might you know what see these players as well. We're maybe going to spend a few million pound bringing on. We're going to develop you. We're going to turn you around double in, in two year time. We're going to double what we paid for you. So mm. there might be that kind of acceptance to say that this is part of your operating model now. Yeah. That we are maybe every year going to going to have to just be be resigned to the fact that I we're going to lose a fucking star each year. But you want to know we've got today we're going to reinvest that money back and we're going to raise the yeah. the salary cap or salary and post salary cap ourselves. But you're still going to run it financially prudently. But you're going to use any profits that you're getting back in the team and you've got it because we, we spoke about it before about having as a football club and many many have done it in the past your football club your biggest assets play on the park for you so see if you're operating your business as well maybe just underneath break even if you're doing that as well maybe know that in a financial world as well the most sustainable model but if you know you're going to punt somebody for 10 15 million pound every year as well there's your break even point there all right you're going to do that and you're going to earn the the the, 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 the plus points and if we are Continuing to take advantage, as you can see with this transfer strategy, looks at looking at all these markets where we can pick players up for yep. for a couple of million pound here as well. Then the chances of you know a hundred percent, two hundred percent, fucking five hundred percent turnover in, in what we're actually spending here and is there. So, okay. I, I, Scott, I, I, Scott, do you think I, that do you think that the 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 time is now? The time is now. Paul Spall spoke about the money we spent under a nail and. Listen, well, me, me personally, I don't know about all fans, you, you crave to do well in European football, whether it be making a dunt in the Champions League and getting through to the last 16 or getting another decent run in, in the Europa. So the way football is now, take aside the, the, the Saudi money because that's going to be there for a while. How, how long it lasts, we don't know. But do you think as fans that the, the time... Is now that we, we expect us, we expect 10, 15 million pound players and 30, 40, 50 grand a week. And I, I, I can agree with Hoggy was saying there. If that's the business model, I'd be happy with that success. Maybe, maybe no making 30, 40, 50 million quid a year in the fucking coffers for their cunts, but giving the fans what they deserve and, and putting a team on the park that will get and go, go into a Champions League group and, and finish second. Or get to a semi quarter final, semi final of the Europa League. The the transfer fees and the wages have kind of stood still for for two thousand, mate, for two decades. Aye. Um the, the the time is now for me. Brendan back in, I think it's gonna be the right man, even though some of his signings the last time were sketchy as fuck. Um I I think we spend the money, get these players in, mate, and, and go for it. Go for it, man. I think the, I think the issue of the new is is we've not actually seen a Brendan Rodgers signing come in the door yet. I mean Aye. these boys these boys have all been in the yeah. pipeline for maybe two or three years. Celtic have been watching them for two. Not one of these signings is a Brendan Rodgers signing. Let's be honest. Yeah, that's the way that's the way fit was gone now. So what we what we are saying is we need a Brendan Rodgers signing. Who's who's mm. he earmarked to bring into this club? Is it going to be the boy Teddy? Is it going to be your riders for 15, 16 million? It is the time to push the button. We keep saying on this podcast, it's the time for Celtic to push the button. We need we need an upgrade on Joe, or we need an upgrade on Kyogo. We need an upgrade on Joe Hart, like Paul said. A goalkeeper for me is a must as well. So they we spend 10, 15 million on a goalkeeper between 25 and 30 year old. I I think we do. So now's the time for Celtic to push the button and go for these big signings. Aye, I mean, Andy, what's your thoughts? Go for it, mate. Spend big. Bring the big, bring big ears back. Aye, I mean, uh, spending money doesn't necessarily bring you success. I, th- I was quite happy with bringing in players at a, a quite low um, fee and developing them and, and kind of selling them on to make a fair bit of money. I think, well, well, We've not really had any what we call marquee signings for, for quite a long time, I think. And when it comes to bringing in players as well, I think we're we not used to Ange having the business done quite early. That It seems as if it's quite kind of slowed down now, but it's probably just 
the normal pace we were working at before Ange came in. I'm uh-huh. not too I'm not too concerned about it. I've got to be be honest with you. I think there's yeah. definitely a lot going on behind the scenes. But I do agree with what Scotty said there as well. It's quite obvious these are club signings and no Brendan Rogers signings that are going on here. So his his influence will start to uh, come in. Now we're saying the next week or two you you'll start to see his influence on the uh, transfer market. I, I think like uh, sir. A Scott, a Scott Sinclair type, obviously that was a Rogers signing, that was his probably key signing when he came in. I think we will see somebody like that. I, I, and, and we need to, we need to, he needs to. I, he's still came back uh, without big guarantees. Nah, There's no, no way chance. He's still came back without major guarantees. I'm talking about just financial guarantees, control guarantees as well, an element of control. Because obviously I'm in law, we're well documented, we're not good, exactly the best of buddies at his, in his last stint. So to put that aside, I'm not believing that these meetings didn't take place and, and guarantees on both sides, including the length of time he'll be here, Rogers, by the way, which I think will be might surprise people but I'm there again. Who knows? But, <laughs> know. but you know what I mean? So I think we'll see a, a Scott Sinclair type signing, a def that his type of player that he wanted coming in. Uh, to augment what's already there. Maybe one or two. Uh, definitely, mate. Hoggy okay, boy. Um, it feels as if it's been a, an eternity, but before we jump on to teams, 11 a.m., you know, great British time on Wednesday. We will have the Celtic game back live. Um, as we said, plenty of time left in the transfer window, mate. But looking forward to seeing the hoops in action on Wednesday. Are you working from home? I I will be working from home, mate. I've got a, I'll not go into my ailments, but I've got a physio like an appointment on Wednesday at 11, half 11 so I'll miss the first half of it um, but I, I'm looking forward to it <coughs> it's conversations we've all had uh, over the last few days in on a couple of chats and, and Paul mentioned it just just earlier on day that I'm fucking choking I'm choking two weeks on Saturday this Saturday and in another two weeks first team game um, well first league game game we've got the, the James Forrest testimonial in the midweek before it which I don't know what kind of crowd's going to be at that one, mind you, but two weeks on Saturday until the first league game of the season, I can't fucking wait. It, it, it's it's it, it was good to maybe get the first week or, week or two half better since then. I've been absolutely champing at the bit for some Celtic stuff. Right, definitely. I'm, I'm absolutely eager as fuck to start seeing them play. Um, and we'll just eat today. We listen. They're in Japan on Wednesday, and then they're playing Saturday. 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 Aye, Wednesday, mm-hmm. Saturday, mate. Basically, having a cold kickoffs. Ah, so, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it, Dale. Um, better than that, Andy. Um, the 29th of July sees the CSP boys reunite for another tilted Glasgow, mate, and on the beverage in a couple of weeks, mate. I'm looking forward to that more than I'm looking forward to the football start. <laughs> I know, and the good thing is that we play Wolves in Dublin that day as well, so we'll be able to take in a game and, and destroy Glasgow at the same time, which is... That's it, mate. That's it, mate. I'm taking it, lads, when we're out on the Saturday, we will need to find a pub with Celtic TV. I take it that'll be the case, eh? That'll be on, I don't think, it'll not be on any, it'll not be on fucking telly or anything like that, will it? will be on that via play, maybe, mate. I doubt it. Right. I think if you get if you get a pub in in, in Glasgow you know, that's maybe sympathetic to the to the old Celtic, then it might be a, a wee decision that we make just to spend a couple of hours in there. Gallagher, then as eh? Right, um, listen, we'll crack on and get some of these cult teams up. I'm, lo- I'm looking forward to it, Scotty. It, it's your gig, mate. It's your idea, so you can run with it, mate. Just you let me. What I'll do is I'll put Barry's team up first, since obviously Barry can he. Be with us tonight. He's back on the back shift. Um, guys, I've, I've got six teams. The guys that have been watching the, the comments come in as well. There's six teams that we've been that's been put in as well for the. Aye, we'll the jump guys. back and so forward to them. I've time stamped that as well. So just give me a wee shout, and I'll bring up a team now and again that's for the right. viewers that's, that's submitted. And we'll get a wee chat we'll, with them. We'll fire our Barry's up. He's back to his graft on the old churches tonight, and then it'll let Scotty run with it. Uh, Barry Quinns, there we go, and a manager, a manager as well, guys. By the way, Paki Boner, Elliot Aitken, Lustig, Decanio, Grant, Lennon, Joe Miller, Cadetti. Uh, it's hard to argue that there's no more. Oh, a few, a few Celtic legends in there. Going sticking back up again, down yeah. Jack Anofsky. Jack Anofsky was a great shout, mate, and I was going to. 
Barry sent me it and I thought, I'm firing that in, but I thought, nah, that, that's cheating. I don't know what I add any in, but um, Vim Janssen, who's, I'll get away anyway, Vim Janssen was mine as well, just because of the one season wonder. Um, out of the eight players, Paul, Andy, without getting your ages away, um, you are a, a, wee, a wee bit older than us, Scotty as well, being hockey of the young bucks tonight, Jack and Oski, <laughs> Joe Miller, yeah. Peter Grant, Big Elliot, Aitken, guys that you've got good memories of. Aye, definitely. Jack gave his four goals against Partizan Belgrade. Spoke uh, about it the other night. Fun aye, enough, mate. I mean, I've been family he's in my team, but uh, aye, brilliant. Still not very sure what the score finished up that night. We got put out, but I'm still not sure how it finished. But incredible memories. Great player. Could have been a, could have been a, could have been a great. <coughs> Scotty boy, you're good. Take it away, brother. I'll sit and shut up. Aye, happy with that team. I think I had three of them in my team. So, Hoggy, do you want to put my team up next? Yep, I'll get that done now, brother. Scotty boy, off you go, my man. Oh, oh shit. Can you see that? Oh, what, man? That was, that was me, by the way. Right. So, in goals, I went for Arthur Boric. Um, I remember the day he signed for Celtic because I was up at a tour and I shook his horn and I've never seen a pair of horns bigger in my life. <laughs> I'm not even joking, you man. His fucking horns were humongous. Um, he was just as mad as a box of frogs. Definitely a cult hero at Celtic. I loved all his patter at Ibrooks and stuff like that. He was just an absolute mental case. And oh, I would, I'm, I'm, I'm needing horns like that, man. I need to use two, you know what I mean? <laughs> I would love him. <laughs> love a keeper with Boric back at Celtic. Love it. Definitely, um, yeah. Right back, Mikel Lustig, obviously because of the Polisman hat stuff and all the other mad capers that he'd done, the dancing and the the, the training run and stuff like that. He was just, he was like Boric, he was just half his nut. So I like folk like that and he was a, a fan's favourite as well. Left back, I went for Kieran Tierney for yeah. obvious reasons. Um, cult hero at Celtic, I think he always will be. And hopefully we can see him back this season. Uh, in the middle, in defence, I went for Roy Aiken. I was going to go for Bobo Baldi, but I replaced him at the last minute with, with Roy. Uh, local guy to me, and just a cult hero at Celtic, Feed the Bear. He was just brilliant for us. And beside him, I've got Enrico Anone. Again, a, a massive cult hero at Celtic. Brilliant player. I remember the one performance when he had to get in man Mark Michael Lowdrop at Ibrox, I believe oh, it was. And... Uh, just had a what, a, what a player, what a player he was, by the Aye. way. He was a fucking great player, wasn't he? Ah, he was brilliant, mate. And he had, had loud up in his back pocket that day. And he did a uh, lot of games, Scotty. He did a lot of games he played against him. He didn't well against Loudrup. That's right, mate. Ah, you're right, Paul. You're right. Uh, middle of the park, I went for Bruni, for obvious reasons. Um, massive cult hero at Celtic. Used to bam everybody up every single week. And beside him, I went for probably the maddest player ever to be in Scottish football. Mm. Morning, Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Gravison, man. That story, Thank man, where everybody's like, morning, Mr. Strachan, morning, Gaffer. Morning, yeah. Gordon. <laughs> and and by, by all accounts, obviously well documented with the boys that done open goal because Cy Ferry was running about. The stories are absolutely phenomenal. I know Aye. Strachan absolutely despised the fucking grun that he walked on. All, so. all that apart in his daftness, I was lucky enough to see him what I would say in his prime at Goodison, a right few times, and by by the chaos, the guy was a fucking really, really good football player. Yeah, I just think he maybe go... I scored, scored a few good goals for us as well and done yeah, reasonably well on the team, but Strachan's a... As much as I love to be Strachan and he's got good crack in that, he seems like a very, very hard taskmaster, yeah. and if you're no doing it his way, you know... Going the way you're wanted to do, training wise, not nah, you're fucking you're out in your ear, and the big man loved it. Ah, uh, he might have he might have actually thrived under a different manager. You know, you never mm -hmm. know. But I think it was just because he, if he was playing right back, he was out in the left wing and stuff like that. You know, he just his positional sense, obviously, it was just well, he was a madman, brilliant. But Hoggy, Hoggy could be away for a shite, maybe what they know. There he is. There he is. There he is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> On the, on the left, I went for Bellamy. Again, I think we only had him for the six months, but just a, a cult hero at Celtic, that goal at Ibrox again. Mm. Just a brilliant, brilliant player. <laughs> I think he had done it at Glasgow Airport with the, the Rangers fan with the Man My City Man tap City. And, when he was at Man City. I'm not signing that tap and stuff like that. 
Brilliant uh, batter. Just loved him, man. I thought he was full, great for us as well. Full family are, are Celtic fucking daft, by the way. He's full family. My, my old man worked with his brothers and that, uh, on the railway down in Wales. And uh, it wasn't just a kind of fad because he came and kicked the bobbies. His family have been Celtic fucking daft their full life growing up in Wales, which is, well, I suppose worldwide fan base. It, the Aye. people you speak to, you don't you least expect it, innit? He's one I wish we'd go permanently. On the, right, on the right, I went for the, another nutter, the Canio. Um, I think it's that goal with the golden boots they had on against Aberdeen no, that just man. sticks out a mile. I think it was like a 70 yard ball for Alan Stubbs at the back. And he just brought it down as if it was a fucking five yard pass, man. And just dinked it to the keeper. And he only wore their games that, uh, they boots that one game, I believe, as well, the golden boots. And uh, what a goal that was, man. And up front, again, for the last person I went for, another nutter. Yeah, who used to get his private helicopter land in the training ground for London on a Monday morning and mad shagger, McAvenny. So that's my cult 11 with Tommy Burns in charge. Fucking uh, Martin Shike, a bit of that. Fucking good one. <laughs> Aye, so, so is mine, but mine probably the same as yours. Just some absolute random saucy yep. in my team. <laughs> um, right, I'll go, I'll go next, Tommy Boy. Before we, what we'll do is we'll split some of the viewers' ones up. Split up between that with, with the viewers' ones. So let me get right back to the start. So seven thirteen. If I get back to the start, seven thirteen. We have got right. So Chris Fraser um, is the next one up there to Chris's team. So Latchford, Morris, Aitken, Whitaker, McKinley, Grant, Burley, McStay, McAdam, Tom, and Pierre Van. Aye, see, see, that's a good one. No say then against the maestro, by the way, but that's a good one. But players you wouldn't really expect, you know what I mean? Latchford, Whitaker, McAdam. That's that's class, man. I like that one. That's a good one. Brilliant. It's I mean, it, it's 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 aye, it's definitely one of the ones that ticks the box for the likes of Feed the Bear, the likes of Big Roy, and the likes of Paul. Um Craig look, Burley, Craig Burley been in there as well. Yeah. I, I wasn't expecting to see Craig Burley's name as much as I've seen in some of the teams, but you know, rightly so. What an impact that lad had for a for a really, like, yeah, a really ah, fantastic yeah. year. Yeah. That year. Um, Peter Provo stuff in there. Andy Tom, that was one that I'd fucking I sat with, and it was like the fucking German stig man. I was ready to stick him in mind, but I did I didn't quite get him in there. But I think for for certainly for my team, I can say that there's two players that I've got in my eleven that's that's in that one. Right. Then, Hoggy, go for it. Chuck yours up, Hoggy. I'm going to throw one more, one more, um, one more team up, and then I'll do mine, right? So, marquee player network: Boric, Anoni, Baldy, Varga, Izzy, Varga, Lambda, Hatati, Stan Petrov, De Canio, Musa Dembele, and skin him, Bobby Petter. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Hatati, are they yeah. already? Right. Again, that that's a, what you're saying, Dale Hatati. You know, in years to come, I might you might look back and say cult hero. But again, oh, I, I, I listen. If if they sell Hatati, they know. They talk about this in five years. They'll, they'll look at the three 0 game at, at Park Keith when he scored the two aye, goals. Man. Aye, aye, yeah. man. It's dead, aye. It's not. As I say, it's not hard to make your name yeah. if you do something big and I, and I sell it. That. It's a, beauty, it's a beauty of a cult team, man. It can just be anybody, like we said earlier, man. It's, it's a brilliant topic to, to discuss. Ah, I've got a few randomers in. I'm oh, going for the polls. I'm oh. for the polls, I know, actually. Whoa. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll stick, since Paul, uh, Scott is directing traffic as well, so I'll, I'll stick mine up as well and, and give you a wee chat through mine, right? Go so for it, okay. I, I've, I've got a player manager in, right? So I, I couldn't separate my manager for one of the players, so... I've got the guy who's my manager actually in as one of my players. Take for that what you will. Again, you probably know if you're marking it. My Maybe. love of a certain Celtic player. But here's here's my team. So at the back, or sorry, in the in the goals after Boric. Again, I think Cult Hero, Crazy Horse as well. Woods, that was that was the one for me. <laughs> I think Enrico Anoni is in at right back for me. Again, as you said, Scotty Boy and, and Paul. I think his his games against Brian Loudrop was probably showed his class. I think he was an absolute fucking class player, but he was yep. one of the ones he looked like a fucking maniac, and he kind of was a maniac. Aye, aye. Big Bobo just because he's a big fucking black unit air guy and just taking the prisoners and the the stories you hear about cracking mortar for Barcelona and the and the the, the the tunnel at half time and stuff like that and Jackie McNamara and 
Tom were talking about an event and said he used to he just used to crack them when the day out in the park. We used to just wait and get into the tunnel and absolutely just fucking have cunts in the in the tunnel. <laughs> Pete the bear was in there for me as well, so I put big Roy. Um and I, I only caught the very, very, very tail end of Roy's career at Celtic. Yeah, so yeah. I can't even say I watched a lot of, of Roy live, but uh, I, I can tick the box to say I did see that man play. And then Tom Boyd, Tom Boyd's a local lad to us. Um I, I think Tom Boyd was was for me. It always will be a great, um, but he wouldn't ever get in my, my greatest Celtic eleven. So I think just because he's a local boy, because he, I mean I've stood in the same pub as him many a time, fucking drinking pints with him and stuff like that. So he uh, he's a class act. He's a class he act. Too. He wouldn't be far away from Mitch Hoggy. He wouldn't be far away from my old time favourites. No. Telling you, great player. It was it was considered, but I, I think we've 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 had better again. If you're putting him up against Kieran Tierney, yeah, like, Kieran would always be in in mind there, but. But Tom, he's, he's a great guy. Does a lot for the the, the foundation. Does a lot for for Kano and stuff like that as well. Ah, Peter, nice. Peter Provo in the middle of my park, so he's my, my holder. Peter Provo in front yeah. of him. Lubo, I, I had to have Lubo in there. I, I did think about other players as well, but Lubo just because he was fucking absolutely class as fuck. Um, Paolo Di Canio, that might split opinions on people because people think Paolo Di Canio is an absolute lamer guy. Dodgy politics, that's for sure, but yeah, I but yeah, football and politics don't belong in the same fucking sentence, boys, as well. So, for, for that reason, Paolo Di Canio for the time uh, he in was an absolute fucking whirlwind, he was absolutely fantastic. Tommy Burns is my hero at Celtic, so Tommy Burns plays on my left wing and manages the side. Um, and then my two up front is Darius Jakanowski. And your man Francis McAvenia. Oh, McAvenia, no, aye, aye, good one. There's my two. So that's that that's my, that's my one. Aye, that's, that's a good one, I know. That's a good side, man. So I'm going to get back again, and we'll go back for some mere viewers teams. I've got the more time fucking stamped here as well. So let me just scroll back to them. Right, seven fourteen. We've got plunge up next. So plunge has actually put two teams in as well. So I don't know if he's having his own with some of them or not, but we'll see. <laughs> Plunge his first team, Broto, Telfer, Rogan, Elliot, Denier, Graham, Sinclair, Cohen, Hartley, Peyton, Coyne, and Arps Deacon. Cult heroes. I'm like, Graham Sinclair? Is that, a, is that somebody's name, Graham Sinclair? Graham, is that no, Graham Sinclair was uh, famously marked fucking, uh, what's his name, fucking uh, Cruyff out the game. Right. Ah, he'd be Ajax. Oh, uh, aye, aye, aye. Right. Uh, I never seen him. I think I've seen him a couple of times. It was fucking murder. But that one game, <laughs> that, that, one, that one game, apparently on Ajax, which I've only seen the highlights say, uh, apparently was tremendous. I'm glad uh, they brought you on the right, Paul, to fucking... Aye, uh, so, so it's like he's got two left backs because tell, uh, he's got Rogan as well, so you're going to have to pick aye. there. Uh, but then pl pl Plunge yeah. comes back with a, with a team number two later on, which we'll get to, but... Hey, we've got Alan Woods Wood up next. Alan I Woods. Think better about my team. Alan, Alan Woods' team is well. Tony <laughs> Gould, Anoni, Mahi, Bega, Varga, Mike Galloway, Craig Burley again. Oh, Galloway, man. Tommy right. Gravison, Joe Miller, Tommy Johnson, Tommy Coyne. Cult to not legends, he's saying it as well. Absolute fucking spot on, mate. It's not I've, got a, few, I've right. got a few of them. I've got a few of them. I've got a few of them, mate. So that's, I'm matching. That's good. Right, do you, so there's 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 another couple as well. I'll bring up another two teams for for after the next panelist goes. So, so right. who's up next, mate? <laughs> Go, for it, Andy. Go for it, Andy. Let's see what you've got from Sweden. Right, Andy, Andy, Andy. There Talk us through, mate. Right, I'm not going to I'm not going to spend too much time on the audio stuff because I know my mic's playing up. But uh, I I'm going to get through my quick and all to be fair. Uh, I was going to go with Bonner as a young boy. I was a, a goalkeeper and he was a Celtic goalkeeper at the time. And he was a kind of, I know he, he wasn't the best keeper, but he was a kind of hero of mine. But I went with Boric just because the guy was an absolute nut job and you know, he loved winding up the rotten mob as well. Plus the fact he was a great keeper. Um, I've went with Lustig for the same kind of, he did, I don't think he had a great start at Celtic. He ended up being a cult hero. I think obviously with, with his contributions in the post that and that. And the, Ripping the jersey open and stuff like that. Um, Valdi, it just, he did you, went not he? Just did you. What a man. Uh, big stubs there, I know, man. Big, solid, uh, dependable defender. I, I really like yeah. As a Geary, as a Geary, 
Um, the short guns loved him, didn't they? Yeah. Really loved him. Plus, he, he was a good player as well. Lambert, I think, went under the radar <laughs> with a lot of Celtic fans. I mean, the guy was an absolute class player. Maybe no, me, but, no, me. Maybe he didn't get as much game time as he should have, I think. He spent a, a lot of time coming kind of off the bench and stuff like that. He should have maybe had more uh, starts for Celtic. But what a player, European Cup winner, um, class player. Did he come from Motherwell as well, actually? Lambert? No, it's a Then aye, 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 Motherwell, aye. then Dortmund, then us. Aye, okay. Is he actually from Motherwell? No, he's not, mate. He's not. Oh, right, okay. oh like, sorry. sorry. Uh, Peter Grant, Peter Pointer. Um, yeah. You can... Say what you want about Peter Grant, he was the great stuff like that, but that guy was 100% committed to Celtic. Yeah. And a, a prime example of that is the 95 Cup final, yeah. where he, he went through the pain barrier, put his body on the line, yeah. and, and made sure we won that cup. So, Peter, plus before yeah. that, the games before that as well, just a pure Celtic man. Bobby Peter on the left, always remember him ripping our city. God bless his soul, uh, Fernando Rickson. But yeah. Bobby Peter ripped him to bits that day, uh, cracking. Cranky player, the Canio. Again, you don't want to get all political, um, but what what a player! Absolutely exceptional as a player, gifted technically, and an absolute screwball. <laughs> George, George Cadet, we only had the one season with him, but what a player he would have been with Celtic. It was just it, mind that first game he came on against Aberdeen, oh, yeah, and uh, the crowd was just. And I think we only had off a stadium at that time. I think it wasn't totally built, but. Um, Aye, he came on and he got two goals that night, didn't he? He got the first one with the lot he ran through and... Aye, chipped him. Uh, aye, he, he could have been around, yeah. Aye. Um, aye, he, he was... He, I, I would say he's a cult hero today. I know he, like, a lot of people didn't like him for what he done trying to get out of that. And Big Sammy is one that splits opinions as well because Mr. Fun. Inconsistent and that. But I was a big fan of Samaras. I thought he did, whenever he... He turned it on, he was top class. Uh, big games, Andy. The bigger the game, the better he played. Aye, never the yeah. bad hunts. I can't remember playing, playing ball against the Huns, European yeah. performances. Yeah. But then you go to Berwick Rangers, they was murder. So, <laughs> I mean. who's your who's your manager, Andy? I actually forgot about a manager. Um, I'm going to go with Ronnie Dyla. Good one. Good show. I think he's a, I think he's a good coach. By the way, it's just that yeah, bad timing and stuff. I think for him. So lovely. That's, that's a decent team there as well. Right. So let's we've, we've had a few. I've got I've, with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, can put them all up at the end, even once the panels are done, because it's taking a wee bit of time, isn't it? Right. Let me just get one made up as well. I've got a time stamp here as well. One of the more recent ones. So um, where the fuck is it though? There we are. Jungle Jim podcast. A friend, a friend of the, a friend of ours. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Jungle Jim's podcast. There you are. Johnny Gould. Gould, Johnny Mo Kamara, Stefan Engshaw, Dion Dublin, John Joe Kenny, Reggie Stinker, Ooh. Mark Fotheringham, Skipping Sorrow, Arzani, Only Kamara, and Sepovic. That's. Let's <laughs> <laughs> take a right. yeah, fucking liberty, that one. <laughs> uh, uh, there's, a right, there's a right good chance. Well, I've seen that Paddy was on, it might be one of the boys, but there's a right good chance it's Sir Patrick. It seems like the. The, the lines of a team that that fucking head case would put up. <laughs> I think you're right there. I think you're right. But listen, hey, we, we've all got our, as we said there, we've all got our own opinion of what, what constitutes a cult hero of ours as well. So, aye, and I love the name, aren't they fucking any of them? <laughs> Andy or any of the JJ boys as well, then God bless you for your, for your own opinions, boys. But oh, Jesus. Right, Scotty boy, who's next for the panel for their team? Dell, let's see yours, pal. Del Boy, right? Del Talk Boy. Talk us through it. Talk us One, through. two, three. Del Boy. Right. Um, as I say, I tried to go as much fucking left field and no pick any big names. I think I've kind of managed it, to be honest with you. Um, Connor Hazard, just for the, the four triple <laughs> treble <laughs> fucking yep. pe penalty saves. We'll go with that one. Stefan Mahi, um, the man that everyone's girlfriend would love to sit in his face. Big snippy cell. <laughs> um, absolute maniac here player, man. And he done brilliant for us. One day I left that, absolutely loved a tackle. Um, and just that type of Lustig-esque psycho that had enough talent to get him by, but I think his personality and daftness made him a kind of cult icon at Park Keith, minus, minus all the red cards. 
Big Reaper we spoke about quite recently that that season yeah, the big yeah. stubs we spoke to ten. Big Hoggy spoke quite glowingly on the other night eh, eh, how good a player he was. And Big Elliot never seen a, a lot of him. Um, I think we had him at like 80, 90, 91. Yeah. Um, fantastic football player. I would probably say back then how lucky we were to have him because I think he was probably world class to yeah. be honest with you. Big Elliot on on his game. Um, Big Jozo. Kenny Miller, 30 foot in the air, for that alone, is in for a cult <laughs> hero of mine. Um, Pat McGinley, for Hibs. Mm, right. Signed Pat McGinley in 1993, one, one season, I think. Was it the Hampton season? Or the season he's, before Hampton? Can't finished, remember. By the way, Pat McGinley finished top scorer for us one season. Well, he scored loads of goals, eh? He scored, he scored 17. Scored 17th in midfield, mate. Yeah. And I'm sure I'm pretty positive that was your top scorer that season. It shows how bad was at the time. Aye, he was, mate. Pat McGillan's a good player, Dale. He's I remember there. watching him that year. I think I was 11 or 12 when, when we brought him in for Hibs. And obviously, we were dug shite at the time and going, yeah. how, how, how have we managed to get this guy, man? He's fucking superb. Yeah. And then straight, straight back to Hibs after it, yeah. which was bizarre, uh, considering the shite they brought in. Uh, I've I've put Bailey in as well. Um, brilliant for us. Obviously, it all ended in helicopter Sunday, which was a bit of a dampener. Mm. But fantastic player, great goals. Uh, Darren Jackson, man. Um, by the way, what a, a horrendous time that that guy went through at Celtic Park but, um, with, with brain injury and stuff like that. I would say people might disagree. Darren Jackson for the limited ability they had. Left fucking everything on that part yeah, for selling, yeah. by the way. So, 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 so frustrating. Could have pulled some absolute crackers out the bag, by the way, goal wise. Um, don't think he was ever a fantastic football player, but I loved his attitude. Coming back to that injury as well, I can remember the reception he got at Park Keith when he came back yeah. after his host ball treatment. Um, aye, aye, mate. No, uh, he's not going to come back. TJ, the mad. Fucking cigar smoking Jordy. Um just another dead, dead, dead likable guy, wasn't he? Such a likable guy. Uh, some magical moments in the Celtic tap as well. Tommy Coy, my lord. Good player. Again, I wish he'd have spent more time at, at Park Keith, yeah. to be honest with you. I think you're talking about him as a cult hero. I think if we'd Tommy Coyne for six or seven years, he'd have been going down as a club legend, in my opinion. I think he would have got a barrel load for Celtic. Strange, strange decisions back then with guys like McGinley and Coyne and that getting. I think a lot of them they'll played at the wrong time. They, they come aye, out at the wrong aye, time. Mate. Paul Elliott's definitely into that bracket as well. You could throw John Collins in there as well. Player, top, top players that just come aye. out on their side. Jai C was one. And, yeah. and Harold brought back the, the, the striker that the fans love to hate. <laughs> the most mm. unnatural, awkward looking, re specky football player you've ever seen in your <laughs> life. But the Celtic fans just had such a love for the guy. Obviously, the goal against St. Johnson to stop the yeah. 10 was massive. Some of the stars the guy missed, I think, probably puts him up in the, the cult bracket. Um, I've never seen a guy missing so many open goals and putting things out of the bar in all my life. But um, I thought Brat back just... When I talk about him, it always makes me smile. Yeah. Um, even, even at his worst, you just... He's it was hard to get angry with the guy, man. Yeah. It really was. And and I, 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 put, I put a wee bit of, I put a wee bit of thought behind um, that team, man. I quite enjoyed doing that one, actually. Oh, I enjoyed who, who's your manager? Aye, who's your manager? I, I want to say TB just because of who he is, but for the for the cult and the way I've picked my team, I'm going to pick Vim Janssen for stopping the 10. Stop, man. Good team, Stop, Good right, Hoggy, okay. we'll move straight on to Paul then and we'll finish Aye. off the viewers, eh? Right, first of all, boys, let me apologise because I'm a Luddite with technology, so there's my team. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm feeling in my defence, I only found out last night I was coming on, so I've done this very quickly. Right. And I'm going to apologise in advance. You wait bear me with some of these players. So, a lot of these players have I've picked due to mom just moments that promised so much and offered so little and also just uh, so random so I'm, I'm apologising already in advance Keeper Carol Muggleton <laughs> right, oh, well, yeah, bear yeah. With me, bear with me. by the way not a bad keeper again played in a horrible Celtic team 
And I'm fairly sure without looking this up, and I was going in, I didn't. I'm fairly sure he broke a record for clean sheets. Shutouts, mate. Executive, I executive, 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 clean sheets. So it obviously evokes that response, understandably, for the time he played with us. It was a horrible period. But by the way, no half as bad as he was made it to be. My centre halves, again, bear with me. These are both based on their debuts and what they promised and what they actually ultimately delivered, which was very disappointing. Big, big Tony Mowbray. Right? Makes oh, his big debut. Mogger, man. Big 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 Mogger. Mogger. Decent, by the way, decent player. Made, makes his debut against Aberdeen. Takes a body on the half way line, cuts inside and hits a rake of a shot. Underside the barn come out with thought, what a player we've got here. It was all right. It was average. And also with Mowbray, he was only, it, we were our first supporters dance, which was around about that time, early 90s. And the big man's turned up at the dance. And it was, I will say it was early 90s and we were having the rave, the rave scene. So his ears were fucking bleeding by the time he left the hall that night. But also, he wasn't, he wasn't drinking, right? So he was drinking black cunt and water. I always remember that. And he fucking left about 40 pints in his black cunt and water sir, because nobody could stop buying him drink. So Big Mogger's in there. Next day, oh, I'm, I'm laughing at that comment. Didn't, didn't, didn't blow off with the marquee player. That's a fucking belter. That just sums back, back up, by the way, doesn't it? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I've been there, aye. Oh, <laughs> anyway, next day, I'm partner on is Gary Gillespie. Oh, aye. Yeah, Gillespie, cool. aye. By the way, he made his debut again, I'm sure, against Falkirk. The, the, my memory is that he got the ball, went by a couple of boys and put it in the bottom corner. Scored a great goal. He could have been a great player, obviously. I thought we got him. By the way, paid decent money for him. I think it was like a million, 1.1 million we paid for him. Decent money. And ultimately, wasn't great, so again, falls into that bracket for me. My left back, I had two choices. One was one's my favorite, one of my favorite Celtic players all the time, but I've left him out. Anton Rogan, uh, I thought it was a great full back, very underrated. Yeah. But I went for Darius Dovchik. Dovchik. I went for him is because, again, I think he bought up this reputation, he's been great with free kicks, right? So I think he scored two in his time with us. One was against Rangers, which was a deflection. Another one was up at Forfa. We played Forfa up, at, up, in, up there in the cup. And he scored up there. And that's the only two I can remember. But because we were trying so desperately to cling on to anything at that point, every time we got a free kick, it was, oh, here they go. Chuggy's gone there. And he never, I think he ever got past the wall again. So he's in instead of Anton. My right back, I bet for Paul Telfer. Solid. Nah, he, got bad, he got a bad rep and all, man. I, I didn't think Telfer either. I'm in, I'm in Nakamura. Great combination uh -huh. on that side. Great combination. So he's and, and he never looked, apparently hated football as well, which I think is great. He apparently didn't even like football. Never watched it. Only only played it. And never had any interest in it at all. Solid. Never let us do. Decent. Looked like he's made a card. Son-in-law as well, wasn't he? Aye. By the way, decent player. Striking son-in-law. So what's that, the, the, what's that? He's got him striking son-in-law. Oh, so I, 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 I never knew that. I never knew that. I've got a bit of trivia for one. My next play, but I'm going to go. I'm going to basic four four two. My two wide men, Reggie Blinker. <laughs> for one goal again, right? These two, the two wide men. There's a there's a connection. <laughs> there's a connection, right? And it's both television based. I seen Reggie Blinker playing against Arsenal for Sheffield Wednesday. He was fucking brilliant. Aye. I remember, remember saying, "Fuck me, I'd love a player like that." We get him, and I didn't think he ever covered for that. Recovered for that tackle that he put out and. Was oh, it yeah. No, it was, a, it was one of the it was her in, Champions League qualifier. Aye, it was a part. It was uh, a, it, it was Zagreb. It was a, it was a great, aye, Chris Zagreb. Big Viduka played for him that night, um, but it was That's a right, late game. Yeah. Never, and, and I'm very harsh, I thought, because it was a fucking the unit. The boy was going to go shoot him, but anyway. So Reggie's in. Then the one that really, again, television based, Stuart Slater. Off. No, Stuart Slater, right? I, again, I remember watching the <laughs> days, days we fit on the telly was a, a luxury. West Ham played Everton in a replay. Sorry, Delhi, your team gets beat here, but West Ham plays Everton. Fuck right? it, not you there. Up, right, and Stuart Slater. <laughs> I remember watching it on the telly. It was fucking brilliant, outstanding. And I remember again seeing the same Reggie Blinker. I'd love to get a player like that. So we get Stuart Slater, and it was so frustrating. I don't know how many you've seen Stuart Slater. Nah, no, I mean, three bits and bobs. Again, falls into that bracket of coming into the team at a terrible time. I'm not saying he could have been much better, but I'm sure he scored on his debut, actually, and then couldn't have scored again for fucking love nor money. And one good game against the Hunza, if I remember right, and it was why, like, you came when you get a player, you just wow to do well. 
He just won him to do well, and that was Stuart Slater for me. And I never really, aye, but I never had him. I never had him for the laddie. Uh, middle of the park, I went for Vida Reset for one reason and one reason only. No, two reasons actually. The one reason for him half that hun bastard in the, the Hugh Dallas game. <laughs> <laughs> Because I love that. A bad loser. He was getting beat with fuck. Get fucking through him. Right through him. Ah, yes, I think it was Rod Wallace. I think he turned out the game. Uh, but I'm mean, red all day long. Fucking red all day long. Turned the red. Walked off the park. And also, my big mate, Big Wes, who's probably watching this, hit me with this bit of trivia, and it will be true because he's a football fucking anorak. Reset played in every one of your outfield positions. The 10 Did outfield. Did he? Aye. Aye. He played in every single one of them. Which I never knew. Yeah, that's good. I like that shit. That's 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 uh, so Mike, big Mike Galloway, and again, that's because uh, apart from the fact he was a decent player, a big fella. My first ever European trip was uh, General Ekeren we played or in Belgium, and I think it was eight to nine, and Galloway scores a fucking belter that night. Uh, Tommy, Tommy Coyne scored as well, I'm sure, a fucking belter. So these are all, all these are based on personal memories. So we go up front. I've went for Big Sammy, Big Sammy Ras, purely because I loved the big man. I really did. And he was my daughter. That's when I started taking my daughter to the football week. Grace was probably watching it through there. And she was his favourite player. And I loved the big one as well. I remember being so happy when he scored the two at Ibrox. When he goes around, even when I watched that yet, Dale, when boys, when I watched him going with McGregor yet, I still think he's going to pit it by the post. <laughs> Aye. Aye. I still think he's going to pit it by the post. And I remember in the broom long looking doing it that day. And I've never been so happy for a player that day because he went through a really difficult time. It was never his favourite anyway, but that period leading up to that game, he was getting it stinking. And it was kind of a turnaround moment for him. Then next to him, I went for Jackie Jakunowski. Hey. Uh, I, 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 I don't know how many you've seen Jackie. Aye. Uh, it could have been a good, honest, a better player, but an ability. Uh, but apparently, like the Glasgow nightlife, like a lot. Aye. Aye. Uh, did you see him, Andy? Did you? You did see a fair bit of him. Aye, I see. I've seen him enough. I seen plenty of times. I seen plenty. Of time. oh, I, I seen plenty of again, men. again, lads, if it wasn't in that bracket for me, and it's quite a common theme throughout my team, a player that could have been in another team at another time would have been a great because he had, he had everything for me. So yes. skillful, so strong. Goal scorer, four goals against Partizan Belgrade, we still get beat. Uh, just a just a wonderful football, a wonderful talent. So that's my eleven and my manager, who I'd forgot about that, so I've just jumped it doing no long ago. I'm gonna go with Frank Connor for his one undefeated game at Ibrox against that mob. That's, right. that's a great shout, by the way. And Brian O'Neill scored the last shape. minute. And Brian O'Neill's hidden in the last minute, which meant nothing right. by the way. I'm no joking, the place went fucking mental. I don't know who was at the game that day. The place went fucking mental. It meant absolutely nothing, but it meant everything. What was same. that? What, what year was that? 92? Probably roughly day alive. Just to, Lou Aye. McCary, was, Lou McCary had, been a, was, had had the job, but had the technical Aye, that's right. Aye. That's, so, I'm sure that, that's come up in the... John the Collins scores, talking, Aye. Aye. John Collins scores the first one, but Ali Maxwell drops it, and John Collins seems to take forever to fucking put the ball in the back of the net. They equalised, and I think they were pretty much the last minute, corner. Fucking big Brian O'Neill, both and Brimlow and fucking explode it. So that's, my that's my eleven, and the reasons for them. There is reasons for them all. So there you go. Brilliant man, enjoyed that, Paul. Thanks very much. Yeah, well, sorry, I didn't get it up in a graphic, lads, but that's way above my fucking technical ability. <laughs> <laughs> I caught this Sunday. That's what this Sunday. You just beat yeah, Andy's record for talking. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. on that Hoggy, is there any more for the viewers? Well, there's plenty more, my friend. There's plenty more. Fire so them up, sir. Fire I'm, them up. Go, I'm going back to seven, 19 minutes past seven. This one coming through for part. Fire up. David Marshall, Didier Agat, Van Dyke, Mick McManus, Tierney, DeCanio, Commons, Grant, Jota, Pierre, and Cadetti. Oh, nice. Ma Mar Marshall was one I kind of tinkered with an all with the Barca game and that at the new camp. I kind of. I was Aye. thinking about that one and all. Paul's team, I, 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 I was really considering Shuggy Dovchek and Mike Galloway in mine. Yeah. Shuggy Dovchek is my left back, Mike Galloway is my sitting midfielder, but I, I went for Grant and, and, and Tam Boyd instead. But 
Yeah, yeah, sorry, I was probably being a bit disingenuous. We'd love to check there. Set around these free kicks. He was a fucking good fullback. Good I solid mean, left back. Good solid nice. left back. But by the way, so was Anton Rogan. Anton Rogan, for me, was one of the best attacking. F- and unfortunately for Anton, he obviously had a fucking bit of, a big error in him. But. 18 Cup Finals, 18 Cup Final. Fucking, I've just got to say, if anybody ever mentions the name Anton Rogan, I, I just automatically picture sitting in the armchair in my fucking in my, my couch when he missed that penalty. Against that day, 1990? Yeah, because that would be 1990. Yeah, that's what I think. Stephen, I hear the name An- Anton yeah. Rogan. I just automatically think he mistakes. I, I, yeah, I think he's never played a good side of him. I think of the Centenary Cup final and go back and watch it and watch how good he is that game. Fucking Aye. brilliant. Aye. Brilliant. We've got next, next one, we've got Martin, who's Bor- Boric, Vega, Varga, Reseth, Roberts, Burley, Johansson, Rogic, Thompson, Samaras, Venegar. Fucking decent, fucking, a couple of decent sides actually that's coming up here. Aye. Um, Boys are doing well, that's fair. Boys are doing fucking very, very well. Then we've got. Ryan Taylor, Ryan posted us 22, 29 minutes past seven. Boric, Lustig, Tierney, Baldy, Van Dyke, Lennon, McGeady, Rogic, Bellamy, Sutton, Dembele. Yeah, that's right. a fucking side, that's by the way. That's a best 11. Very good. It's no, no fucking I mean, far off it, man. It's no far right, off. That's, that's no far off a best well, 11. Hoggy, you know I mean? Hoggy, at the end, I've got a belter of question for everybody just to finish us off. Right, cool. <laughs> I was going to make a joke there, but I fucking butt my lip. Butt my lip. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Plunge's team. This is Plunge's second team. Bonner, McGrain, Reid, Aitken, McAdam, McLeod, Proven, McStay, McGarvey, Burns, and Nicholas. There, there, there's some fucking cult heroes in there. Tell you. Nicholas, Nicholas can fucking stuff my shite. That team might have actually all played together at the one time. I'm looking sure. Aye. 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 They could have all played high. Yeah, Mark Reed. Reed. Mark Reed, by the way, good player. Aye. Steady full back, great penalty taker. Sulkits, boy. Aye. Next one, next one we've got Pork Chop Express. L- loving the fucking names, man. Honestly, some of these names are fucking superb. Hunter, Matthews, Garner, O'Leary, Lynch, Grant, Willie McStay, Yarisic, Wilson, Wilson, Callahan, McCluskey. Oof. That's the ones I like, man. Aye, Big one. George. Big George oh, up the top. That was, my dad's quite pally with Big George. What a right. fat player he was, man. Am I being stupid here? Who's Hunter? Goalkeeper. Hunter. I think, I think, look, Pork Chop, you can answer that anyway if you're still listening. I think we had Aliri, Grad, McStay, Callahan, McCluskey was a kind of back, back for that kind of era. Let us, let us know in the comments. Can't think think can't think think that is. Can't think. No. I'm going to try and fun out, but. And he, here's one, Studs, Studs has posted one up as well, which is, uh, again, fucking, we're, we're, we're pulling the names for him, man, we're pulling the, the, the cult heroes out here as well. So Studs, he's Miller, Evans, Hawhey, Crum, Divers, McGrory, oh. Quinn, McPhail, Mocken, Jinky, Larson. Oh. It's a fucking back in the day team, that one, too. Um, so I've got a, goal, a goalkeeper here, Alistair Robert Hunter, Ali Hunter. Side for Celtic, nineteen seventy three, uh, for Kilmarnock for sixty thousand pound. After impressing against Celtic, playing with Kilmarnock the year before, um, I, I played played a few games as well. There you go. Yeah, I still so, don't recognise the name even even looking well, at, at the Wikipedia page. What chop went for a, a team number two as well. So I think what his, his second team as well. I don't think there's many names, but it was. There's one of the names in that you'll probably pick the name out straight away as well. But as soon as I seen the name, it was like, aye, there you are. So Lats, exactly the one. Latch up again, Neil, it's Valson, Gamel, Burns, McStay, McLeod, Proven, McClear, and Wilson. That's that's not a bad yeah. fucking shoot for Wilson. Yeah, the Pork Chop Express in again. I, I worked for uh, Big Shuggies uh, for other one years ago, about 20, 20 odd years ago, and they said it was still. Mad on Celtic, and that, that boy I worked with was a big Rangers fan as well. But he says he was always talking about Celtic. I, unfortunately, he had a brain hemorrhage, and then he took no well, and then he passed away, didn't he? Aye, aye. And then we've got David Gillespie that posted this 740. Karim, Valharan, Sinclair, Anoni, Easy Gary, McLeod, Slater, Tom, Burns, Cadetti, and McClear. Dimitri Karim. 
Can't we've had some life. right dug shite goalkeepers <laughs> over the years, by the way, hadn't we? <laughs> Compared to that mob, man. But remember, Celtic, it was always weird because Rangers always had the fucking right good goalies, but Celtic always had the right good fucking strikers. Strikers? Aye, that I was always... Against that fat Aye. flying pig. Fucking bastards. That they and the last one I'm going to put up for, for uh, actually, yeah, Robert Baker. So Robert's cult 11. 4-4-2, Marshall, McNamara, Simunovic, Anoni, Tierney, Commons, Ledley, Lambert, De Canio, <coughs> Big Pierre, and Hooper, and his manager... God bless the man, Thomas Burns. Lovely. Yes. Yeah. So that's Love some, some really, really good teams. I've got very, very sim familiar names and, and similar names that's running through a lot of the threads of the teams, but there's some right fucking crackers. Some right... Aye. It's probably, good to see all the old names coming up. You'd never aye. probably speak about them, innit? Absolutely, mate. You're Absolutely. the hands, Scotty. Good shout. Keep coming ah, your ideas, mate, because we're all shite. <laughs> right. I've got a belter eh, a question to finish us halfway, lads. So... You have to pick one player for your cult team that you would sign the day. Who is it? Why? Well, I've got to pick mine back up. Right, go for it, Scotty. I'll start this off. My pick out of my team would be Arthur Boric. Because oh, I, I think he's a better goalie than Joe Hart. And I think we need someday that quality and goals if we're going to make a go at this Champions League this season. So Arthur Boric is my choice. Who are you okay. going with, Paul? I'm oh. going to go with Jakunovsky, because I think in any good a good Celtic team, he would have been an absolute superstar. I really do. And proper training, different times, he got allowed to, obviously, it's, it's different off the park now as it was back then as well. Uh, so I think with the reins on him and in a right proper team, he could have been a, a proper, proper player. We'd need to so pub watch him. <laughs> yeah? We'd need to pub watch him. <laughs> aye, 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 aye. Apparently Victoria's was his spot, apparently. Vicky's up Socky Hall Street. Apparently that was his downfall. Him and Chick Young. Aye. Dale, who was yours there, mate? I think just with my 11, God with the team nowadays, with Brendan back, fucking Craig Bellamy flying would have to be for me, man, you know? Yeah. I think right. Bellamy, aye, definitely like that team. Yeah. Aye. Bellamy. Andy, who's yours? George Cadet. Oof. Aye, man. Aye, Aye. 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 I, I, I think um, in this team, <coughs> it would score a bad award if he's got a wee bit longevity on the team. Plus the fact there was a lot against us. Jim Farry held up his registration for fucking six weeks and all. Stuff like that went against us. And offside goals that never work. Val oh, would really help us out in that situation. I, know, I think the guys would be an absolute goal machine. Oh, brilliant. Uh, let me put my team up again, boys, just to see who I would, who I would have. Um, Oof. It's only one choice here. Feed the bear. Oh. Dov Cheng, Machiavelli in the one team, man. Feed the bear. Leave me in my pub box for they two, cunt. <laughs> see, if want, see if you want a fucking centre half, it's just going to work like fuck as well and boot things up to do the place as well, but be actually fucking a really, really good fucker player as well. Roy Aitken. That would be it. So I'm going to take that further, right? Pardon me for bite for, for fucking hijacking your question here, Scotty Boy, right? So we've all we've all picked our players, right? So I'm going to give you those five players again there. And out the five that were selected, who out the five are you picking? So Scotty's picked Arthur Boric, Paul's picked Jackie Jackanovsky, Andy's picked George Cadet, Dale's picked Craig Bellamy, and I've picked Roy Aitken. Oh, of those five, are you pulling out for Brendan's team? Are you sticking with your own? Or are you going to go no. with one of the other boys? Roy Aitken for me. Paul's went for Roy. I'm going to stick with Roy. I'm going to stick with Roy. I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with Scotties. I'm going to say Boric. Boric, right? Yeah. I'm going to say Boric as well. It's something. I think we we desperately need an upgrade in Joe Hart, so I'm going for Boric. And Andy's a, Andy's a settler here. Andy, who are you going for, brother? I, I'm I'm stuck between sticking with Cadet or going with Feed the Bear or Boric, and I'm I think I'm going to stick with my own decision. I'm going to stick with Cadet. Ah, well, good mate. Stick to your guns. I like that part. That was good. Oh, that was that was good. I enjoyed that. Right. Different, different, man. That's how we fucking roll. That's how we roll, man. 
love that man. Paul, thanks again, mate. I know you well, said well, you you were having to nip to work now if you need Aye, to go. I've got it, but... Listen, lads, thanks for the shout again. Uh, I'll get me back. I'll, I'll come back on some other time if he's going to be bothered. Once, it, the, once the season's up and running, Aye. mate, maybe. Right. A wee, Perfect, a wee, boys. Wee, Listen, wee take care, lads. Ever, enjoyed that. that was, by the way, that, Scotty, that was superb. Really enjoyed that. Uh, Thank you, man. Take it easy, lads. Have a good night. Hail, hail. Well, take yeah, care, yeah, bro. Cheers, Cheers, bro. Uh, hockey Monday night. I know Scotty's running the gig, but end the show stuff. Or anybody, anybody go in before we finish up. We've no plans for Friday, by the way. We will have a good Friday show, by the way. We will have a good Friday show. Um, I think I'm going, I don't think I'll be on Friday. I'm going into the sisters. Um, they're away on holiday on Sunday for, I don't know how long Gary's away for, six weeks or something, Lanzarote singing. So we have got a wee family do um, arranged for a bit of scan and that on Friday. And then I'll... Since Andy's been in fucking Sweden, Scots and Spain, I'll come live for sunny or rainy Eyemouth next Monday night in the caravan. That's just what we do on here, know what I mean? Maybe get a wee Brazilian guy or something on some of that. I don't know. It's the, way, the way we're gone. <laughs> Can I just mention the, the, the experience I had with the Hammerby fans, which was... Oh, hi, Andy, sorry. Tell us about it. Fantastic. As soon as I got... I mean... I've got to say as well, when it comes to Sweden, see their public transport, especially going to places, that's absolutely fantastic. Just constant, you, you, you're never late for anything. And there's a train takes you straight to the stadium, there's like a shopping centre next to it, straight out, dead, easy access. You walk into the stadium and you get a drink or something to eat, there's burger places and everything, like real burger places, nothing like the ones you see at Selic Park or the ship pit. Um, Aye, brilliant experience, and people are coming up to us, obviously, I'm there in my wee ass with the Celtic tap, the hoops on, and one wee guy from Uganda, he says, I'm for Uga I'm a Celtic fan, but I, I live here now, and Hammerby's my team, but Celtic's my first team, I can't believe this, and he's there with his pal, and he's going, look, Hammerby and Celtic, Hammerby and Celtic, all the guys I was speaking to up in the stands as well, just talking away to them, just constantly talking about Lars, and just how much they love him, and all that, and great, great fans, great atmosphere, um, I want to say the quality was fantastic. I've got to be honest. Plus, that's, what, that's what I was going to ask you. What, what, was, what was it like? <coughs> there was a <coughs> they had one player, I, I can't mind his name, but it's escaped me. I'll try and find out for Friday. Number seven, he is in the Hammerby team. Um, he's a kind of left winger, half decent player as well. Scored a goal, looks no bad, no very pacey, but technically quite good. I spoke to one of the guys about it. He says he had a good start there this season and he's drifted off a wee bit, but he played no bad in that game. But they're playing an artificial surface as well, which isn't, he, isn't he great. Um, but cracking we arena, I think it holds about 35,000 or something. But what an atmosphere. It was brilliant, man. Brilliant. Uh, it looked good, man. If any of you haven't seen it, you jump onto the, the CFP YouTube channel and go into the videos. You'll, you'll see the video Andy sent us through for the, the Hammer Bay game if he's haven't already. Um, I just, just for me again, thanks. Obviously, at the start of the show, we did mention the memberships are back up and running, the, the super thanks and all that kind of stuff when we're live. Um, I say that anything that comes in, um, we'll keep these posted what's in the coffers and what we're putting it towards, whether it's equipment for live stuff and that, or treating the boys nice and taking them out for a pint because they all deserve it. Work, work a lot harder behind the scenes than these, these probably think, just sitting watching us. Probably the baby in that talking shit, but aye, a lot of stuff does go in the background. And aye, just thanks again, man. The, the memberships have come back in just as quick as they disappeared, Hoggy. So aye, superb, man. Aye, aye, it's good, mate. It's good. And obviously, we've, we've got a it's only in the space of a few weeks, mind you, as well. But the, the, the obviously, the subscriber numbers have dramatically increased um, mental. over the last kind of few weeks as well. So, just again, huge thanks to everybody that's joined as, as subscribers and members. Um, and yeah, we, we'll fucking keep we'll keep churning it out, boys. We'll keep churning it out if you just keep watching us. So that's what we're all about. That is what definitely, we are. definitely. Uh, just just the usual. Um, on Friday night, seven o'clock, religiously as we do. Friday, Monday, no changes. So Hoggy will be back. Um, Scotty boy, you busy? I don't know if I'm gonna be in Morocco or Seville or something like that. But if I'm no, I'll let you know, mate. I'll let you know. Um, Andy boy, you him? I will be back on Friday morning, so I'll be on. Um, right, so that's the I'll check with Barry. Listen, there'll be three or there'll be three or four on as as there always is. 
obviously we've got Paddy, we've got Barry, and we've got our Kevin. So we've got a right, right, good, strong, strong seven now. So there will always be four years or three years nuggets on um, twice a week. Uh, keep his, keep his entertained. So I just, just thanks again. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Um, anything else, lads, you want to add? Other than our usual thank yous and claps in the back to everybody um, before we shoot and get on with our Monday. I just, if you enjoyed the show, ladies and gents, just tell your pals, you know, like, share and subscribe and tell all your pals. It's totally different for every podcast that's out there. So, you know, just tell your pals. That's it. All right. Aye, hundred percent. That is amazing. <laughs> We've been beating the drum for ages. It is different, and I, I, I reckon we'll be so marmite hoggy to a lot of people. Folk don't like the swearing. Folk don't like the drinking. Folk don't like shape talking. Whatever it is, maybe. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll never change, man. We'll we'll no put. We'll not dare tell our phone voices and stop swearing because somebody didn't like it. Um, that's who we are. So if you enjoy it, spread the word. Make sure if you're telling them the Norwegians are watching it, there's plenty of fucking cutting bastard and swearing on it. Just let them know that. Let them know that. Sorry, Mum. Um, but I, I spread the word, man. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, like, share, comment, all that good shit that we probably forget to say every week. But other than that, just have a have a blessed week. Stay safe, man, and enjoy your Monday to Friday and. Three of these sexy lads will see you on Friday night for the Friday Shite Talk. So, God bless, guys. Take care. CSP over and out.